A couple weeks ago, I brought up Rotten Tomatoes, and I talked about how Rotten Tomatoes uh, have both helps and hinders uh, the movie-going industry, uh, producer studio heads, and the public. And I think this is a good case, or this is a good follow-up to that story. We're going to be talking about All Eyes on Me, the Tupac Shakur biopic. Regardless of quality, I didn't like it. Okay, I'm just getting that out of the way. You want my review, you can read it at stevethemovieman.proboards.com. Now, you can read my review on that and what I thought. Now, for a while, it looked like All Eyes on Me was going to be a big hit. It opened a couple weeks ago, the week of June 16th, uh, which was Tupac's birthday, uh, the late Tupac's birthday, with $26.4 million. Big hit. Big, big opening week. Big numbers right there uh, for a movie that was looking like it was going to have legs uh, at the box office similar to Straight Outta Compton. Now, what wound up happening was its second week, it dropped tremendously. Dropped tremendously in its second week. It only made $8 million. That's very disappointing. And right now, it's uh, now it's getting removed from theaters. Now it lost over a thousand theaters uh, this past weekend. Uh, didn't rake in a ton of money. Uh, brought in just a little over a million dollars, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it was about uh, 1.8 million or so for a total domestic run of 42 million. And it's uh, b- and it's it's an expensive movie. It costs about 45 million to make. So it's really now to put this film in, in the clear. It's going to need to really bank on China. It's going to really need to bank on China and overseas markets uh, in hopes to bring back, you know, I mean, the lost figures. Because it was looking like a big hit. It really was. It was looking like a really good hit. All Eyes on Me is very similar to a lot of horror movies in terms of box office performance. These are movies that open big. They open in like $20 million uh, range or so. They open with very big debuts. Then they crash their second weekend, uh, earn a fraction of what they got, earn a fraction of what they of what they got opening weekend. And then they just kind of slither away and just kind of go into relative obscurity. Now, the connection with Rotten Tomatoes here. What does All Eyes on Me have on Rotten Tomatoes? A lowly 17%. I don't want to be like too much of a figurehead over here and spout just statistical data, but I'm going to do it for a couple different examples, okay? This year, we had the movie The Bye Bye Man. It opened with a $13.5 million opening weekend, and then it finally ended its domestic run at $22.4 million. Bye Bye Man has a 24 on Rotten Tomatoes, 24%. Then we went to Woman in Black 2, Angel of Death, made $15 million in its opening weekend back in January of 2016, I believe. Took in to $26.5 million overall. Woman in Black 2's uh, Rotten Tomato score, 21%. Then we go to Friday the 13th, the 2009 remake. This is a prime example for big uh, second weekend plunges and then just overall uh, poor, poor or disappointing box office performance after a great weekend. Friday the 13th took in $40.5 million its opening weekend. Okay. It ended its domestic run at $65 million. Friday the 13th, the 2009 remake has a 25% on Rotten Tomatoes. Then last for another horror movie, remake, reboot, sequel, whatever the hell you want to call this one, Texas Chainsaw 3D came out a couple years ago, 2012, I believe, opened with $21.7 million. It ended its run in 30, with $34.3 million domestic, even with 3D. Its Rotten Tomatoes score, 19%. So the the average of these Rotten Tomato scores is about a 22, okay? And the average box office haul following the opening weekend is no more than maybe 20 million, okay? 20 million dollars after a strong debut weekend, okay? And really, what does that tell you? That tells you, I hate to break it to you people out there because I get a, I get hate mail for this. I do. I get, I get a few hate mails on this and people say, nobody cares about film critics. Nobody reads film critics in 2017. They're worthless. They're of a bygone era. Hate to break it to you folks. Movie tickets aren't getting any cheaper. There's somebody, there's, there's somebody who goes to see nearly every movie that comes out in theaters mainstream. It's us. And we tell you what we think. Now, of course, film critics don't play into this, but is it any co- or don't or aren't solely playing into this? But is it no coincidence that the movies that I just read you that are that experienced 
catastrophic, big second weekend drops all have below 30% uh, review aggregates on Rotten Tomatoes. Is it any coincidence? And now we're going to all eyes on me, and I can keep going here. I can keep going. We could even use Jonas Brothers, the 3D concert experience, if you want, for a movie that doesn't have great reviews and did poorly. We could talk about The Devil Inside. We could talk about the movie Captivity. We could talk about Delgo. We could talk about Collide, which came out this year. I could keep going, people. I really can, but I, I, I'm going to save you the details, okay? I'm going to save you all the, the details. We could talk about The Purge. We can go all the way back to the movie The Purge. Made $34 million its opening weekend, and it bottomed out at $64 million. It's Rotten Tomatoes score. It's about 38%. I know that off of memory. So there you have it, folks. There is a reason that film critics exist. Now, like I said, they're not the sole uh, factors in this, okay? They're not the sole factors. All these films suffered one thing, and that was poor word of mouth. All Eyes on Me would have been a bigger hit had it been... I hadn't had a lower budget, which I'm going to talk about, hopefully with Dominic Guans on next week on the show, about how Hollywood is killing itself with over-budgeting movies. Uh, it would If it would have cut its budget a little bit, in addition to the fact, I would argue, making a good movie, that then it would have probably done better. Maybe not straight out of Compton numbers. Straight out of Compton was kind of like a, a very uh, abnormal thing nowadays, especially the fact that, you know, in, in, in an era, in an age where not as many people are going to the theater and stuff like that. So that was very, that, that's a very different, uh, different breed there. It's not typical. But... That's the commonality All Eyes on Me has, not only with horror movies, but also just with the movie uh, movie criticism or film criticism, if you will. There is a there's a vitality there, and there's a there's a correlation between big second week drop off points or second weekend uh, releases and stuff like that, and domestic growth. Uh, in addition to uh, uh, critic reviews, word of mouth, it all it's all relative. I mean, even if you look at like uh, even if you look at Batman versus Superman, okay? The film grossed $166 million its opening weekend, okay? Now, after that, its second weekend, it had an 81, record-breaking, 81.2% decline on Friday, and then finally a 68.4% drop in revenue that weekend. Now, that's incredible. Now, what is what, now? What what kind of reception? You can try and fill in the blanks for me here, but I'll just let you know. What kind of reception did Batman versus Superman: Dawn of Justice receive? Very negative reviews. Twenty seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Point stands, folks. Film critics still can impact the game as well as word of mouth, and they already have, and they play into big reasons why movies like All Eyes on Me, Batman vs. Superman, The Purge, Friday the 13th, and many, many more do not do well at the box office beyond their opening weekend.